the one that is authentically receiving is authentically receiving source and filtered through their belief system, having an authentic experience that is absolutely real for them and therefore real of experiencing in physical form, the physical expression of the energy that is source, whether it is labeled God or, 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 or otherwise, it is all the same. It's all rooted in the same thing. The dogma, the, the this is the only way and every other way is wrong. That is a human creation. Welcome to the Stream of David podcast. Here once again with us is the fabulous Reverend Denise Roberge. Hello, David. It's wonderful to be here with you today. Always good to have you on. And for those of you that have not listened to an episode with the the, the good Reverend Denise. <laughs> Denise is fine uh, for now. Uh, she is a, a, a Taya Bootcamp graduate of years ago and still a practitioner. Uh, over five going on six years. Still very active in our community, but she has her own uh, practice and her mm -hmm. that, that I'll let her tell you about. But I am going to tee up the topic for today. This is going to be a good one. Buckle up. I'm buckling. We are going to talk about Jesus. I think that's who fabulous. Je who Jesus was. By the way, if you go to the streamofdavid.com on the podcast page, there is a way for you to ask questions that will be answered on the podcast. Whether you want your question to be answered with your name or anonymously, this person uh, wants to be anonymous and that's fine. But they asked the question, who was Jesus Christ really? And so I thought you would be the perfect person to bring on and let's talk about, let's dig into this okay. because there's all these different belief systems out there. I want to start with hearing about you and, and what your thoughts are around this. Then we're going to take a break and then we'll bring the stream in and you can have a little chat with the stream about all that. Oh, that would be wonderful. Thank you, David. Thank you. Well, I guess I'll just jump in. I am a very unique type of minister. I'm a pan-denominational metaphysical minister. However, that being said, I was raised heavily in, in uh, Catholicism. I mean, a heavy, heavy influence of Catholicism. I, I went to church every Sunday for 17 years until I left home. And I went to CCD and I, uh, I thought, you know, I was indoctrinated. I was told I had to marry a French Canadian, a French Canadian Catholic or not get married. I was told my kids had to have French names and had to raise them Catholic. I mean, it was, I was very programmed. Um, although by the time I was a teenager, I started going, what? You can't tell me what to do. What? This is, it's, it's a lot of it didn't feel good. In fact, I was actually spiritually abused and I don't want to go into that, but um, I was spiritually abused uh, and um, mentally abused um, in the, in the church setting. Um, I've done all the detuning. I'm cool with it now. And in fact, I can go to church now and enjoy it. Um, just the experience of being around people that are trying to get closer to source, you know, and, and, it's familiar and I have no more resentments. Thank God they're gone. Um, anyway, so I'm really familiar with Jesus. Um, I was raised with a lot of Jesus. My mother loves Jesus. Um, and so we were, as a little child, I was told that Jesus loves children. And um, everyone said that it was in the Bible and it was, we heard it in church and we heard it at home. Jesus loves children. And so that was the thing I remember from my childhood the most was Jesus loves the children. So I thought that was pretty cool. But then as I got older, I started learning more about the story, uh, about his story and the passion and the crucifixion and the resurrection and all that sort of stuff. And um, had a lot of questions about all of it. Um, it was really hard to understand because if God loves us, why would he let his only begotten son, only begotten, which I don't believe anymore. But uh, at the time I did his only begotten son, why would he let him suffer like that? Um, so Jesus was really, I believe that there was a man named Jesus, son of, um, Joseph, Jesus, Ben Joseph, who lived on this planet. I do believe that. I do believe there was really a man. And I believe he was a really high vibrational being. I believe that he came here to teach us about unconditional love and teach us about uh, source, what we call source, what he would call a father. Now, I would disagree now at this point in my life with source being gendered, but that's, you know, back then, if, if, if God wasn't a man, it wasn't God. So though he didn't have much choice in terms of language, you know, we had to kind of meet people where they were at. So he taught well, even people in our space, still people that channel mm -hmm. 
will very often name their their channeled entity will be a male name. Isn't that interesting? Well, it's still steeped in that vibration of religion mm-hmm. of, of human. I, I call it the humanization of the energetic realm. Well, I I did a lot of changing in Taya because I um, in Taya when I it was such a relief to hear that there was that that there doesn't have to be any dogma that I can let go of dogma. So whatever little threads of dogma that I had left. I was able to detune in in Taya and and be free to think what I want to think and believe what I want to believe. Now I've read a lot of channel material actually about Jesus and about his life. Um, I name them, but I won't. But I've read a lot of channel material in um, in the last twenty years, twenty five years, and it all works. It, it, for me, it all kind of fit together. Uh, reading the channeled stuff was way more informative for me than reading the Bible. Not, I'm not against anyone reading the Bible. Read the Bible if you like the Bible. If it resonated with you, good job, good for you. I'm happy for you. I, but that's not what resonated with me. I learned more about Jesus from other channels than I did uh, from any uh, from the Bible, and I resonated more with it. So why I feel fairly firm about Christ being a man on earth is because of all the channel material I've studied, uh, people that actually lived with him. Uh, broke bread with him. I also have uh, studied the Essenes, who were the people that, um, a group of mystical Jewish people who knew that the Savior was coming, and they prepared everything. They did crystal grids, and they did, they had, they just prepared, prepared the way for him to come, because he, they knew he was going to need a lot of support. So he had an army of support all, all around when he was on the planet, because they knew he was going to be endangered, because he was going to speak the truth. And um, he was going to be the leader and that he was going to threaten the Romans and the Romans were going to hate him. I mean, they all, they knew, they knew the story before he came. They knew what was going to happen before he came. So they were preparing to wait, you know, for him in terms of who was going to do what, who was going to help people escape when, when necessary, who was going to protect Jesus when necessary, who, who was, the, who were the best people to be around him. And, you know, I could talk stories about it, but I, I, probably shouldn't at this point because it's take too t- too much time. So do I believe there was a man named Jesus who was a master teacher? Yes. I believe his, his, I've read just his words from the Bible, just his stuff. It's all about love. It's all about fairness. It's all about kindness. It's all about compassion. It's all about all nice qualities and ways to live and ways to think about the source, uh, the God, as he would call the father. Jesus would call the Father. Um, so I have no doubt that there was a man that came here to teach. I also believe David Strickle was sent or came to be a teacher. And I also believe I came to be a teacher. Am I as great a teacher as Christ? Probably not. Um, there's no Denise-isms out there. There's no churches of Denise. There's no, <laughs> I didn't even start a church. Well, you know, it's early in the game. Well, it's early yet. Yeah. yeah. Who knows, right? But I think that he was real, really, really, really high vibrational. In that respect, I think he was very different than <clears throat> probably 98%, 99.9% of the population. <clears throat> so I, I do believe he was a very special uh, master teacher. So um, are you aware of others before him that were similar stories, though? Of other, um, other I'm not deities. Sure that, you know, it, it's been a long time since I've been in ministry school. We did study all the religions. Yes, there were teachers. Huge and I, I don't have a lot of awareness of this because I don't. I choose. Not there to, were huge to, vibrational teachers all along the way. In fact, some yeah. of the Old Testament um, figures. But there were, were others born of virgins, supposedly. Oh, other, that uh, story, know. that virgin story, that's actually a myth that started in pagan times before Christ. <laughs> That's a story that every religion has a, a, vir- a virgin. Right. Person. There's all these other stories of all these other teachers right. that there's a, a string of similarities. And, I don't, and I don't necessarily, hate. most of the channels don't even believe that he was actually born of a virgin. I, mean, had, I already had, know had, what the stream says about all this, but you're, you're going to hear later what the stream says about all of Oh, good. Bit. I can't wait. Yeah. Um, he was a man just like everyone else. Um, he, he lived his life as a typical Jew for the first however 27 years until he disappeared and then he went he went to um all a whole bunch of other countries he studied under the under the isis tradition in egypt he studied in 
uh, in India with uh, with the Hindus and with the Jains or whoever. I don't remember several different religions in India. And he learned a lot of stuff. So he he went through his boot camp, so to speak. And when he came back at the age of 30, I think he died at 33, when he reappeared because he disappeared for he, he has his lost years. You know, they talk about that's when he was doing his heavy duty studying, heavy duty meditating heavy duty connection, pure source connection uh, time and all that. And he came back to study, um, to teach. He, he was ready to teach. He did what he had to do to learn. And now he had, knew he had to come back to teach and to complete his incarnation. I think he already, he already knew the plan. He already knew what was going to happen uh, pretty much. You know, I'm, I doubt there were very many surprises, but that was part of the plan was for him to go through every single thing that he went through in order to show his godliness. He would probably refer to a word such as godliness and that you too can have it. And Jesus taught one of the major, he taught many things, but one of the things he taught is these things I do, you can do too and better. So he was a humble man and he knew that we were all creations that, uh, stem from the same source. He mm -hmm. knew that and he taught that. So in that way, I think he was very eclectic. He had no compunctions about hanging out with people that were different. He loved all the sinners. He loved the- Yeah, that the, seemed to be the preference, right? Let's let's don't all congregate together with in, right. in our holiness. He wanted to be with the people that needed to hear about off. love. Let's, let's get out there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he wanted to be around the people that needed, uh, that needed a shot of hope and a shot of love and some unconditionality. And so he, he was in among all the people that had issues and problems and, and he showed love for them and he showed respect for them. And he taught, his mission was to teach humanity that it's all, everyone is okay the way they are. They don't have to conform to be worthy of all love and all goodness. So do I, I respect his teachings immensely. I have certainly adopted many of them and still have a feeling for Jesus, the man. I think what animated, I know in my heart, this is my truth and it may not be anyone else's and that's okay. But in my truth, I feel that the consciousness through which he came in as a human, that element of source that he came in through, many people have named the Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. They said the same thing about Buddha. They said, Buddha is full of the Buddha consciousness. They said the same thing about Krishna. Krishna had the Krishna consciousness. So in my opinion, it's the same source. It's the, well, that's the, the stream it's is source, same. and it's it's funny because I I it do a lot of it comes through like, in different personalities, and it comes I, through I, I go to different podcasts and things as a guest, and they'll and you channel source. You're not channeling Abraham or Joseph or mm -hmm. or the, you're channeling source, and, and I will say we're all channeling source. I just say <laughs> we all source. are source. <laughs> I just it is source, and that's why it doesn't have a name. I call it the stream. Because that that was Just really the name. You need to just, refer to something. You need to refer. I, I said I, I remember when I got to sort of a conversational place where I realized I wasn't schizophrenic and I was actually had this you know dropping this knowledge dropping in and I could order it up on demand essentially and this is when I was teaching myself to write and speak. Who are you really? We are source. We are God. We're whatever you want to call us. We we are all that is, mm -hmm. and we're not even a we. Yeah, it's just a way of referring to them as saying they, them, and they, and we, and right. and all of that is just a way of the referring. Human, to human language is very constrictive. It's, it's hard right. to find the, the it correct. It is the energy of source that flows to all of us that we right. all funnel or channel in our own way, and we're not all meant to channel it the same. Right. And and, and I I have certain gifts that allow me to to do what I do. Yes. Not everybody has this, but everybody has a version of it. Well, I'm a channel as well. I channel much differently than you do. Um, and sometimes in the past, the, I, they used to always give me names because I needed names. I don't really anymore, but sometimes I get a feeling like it's a, one of the, one of the streams that I channel, for example, are the, are the Marys in the Bible. They're all a group now. They're, they're all, they're a part of the collective consciousness, but sometimes they choose to come as a group. And speak through me, and there's usually one uh, spokesperson. Well, I and do believe that energy operates on a spectrum. I say that all the time, and that there are things that you can sort of hone in on energetically mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Like when I am channeling the stream, my intentionality behind it is all of source flowing through me specific to whatever topic is. Yes. Yes. But I know that when I write, I specifically, I loved Wayne Dyer's writing. Oh, so do And I, I specifically in, intend to tap into the energy of Wayne Dyer, if you want to call that Wayne Dyer consciousness. Mm -hmm. In both books, I did that. Mm -hmm. And that's the energy I'm tapping into. I did not know that. I, I, I don't into... say that publicly very often because I don't want to hear from the attorneys of the estate of Wayne Dyer. <laughs> 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 but, you know, that's that was my intention and that's what flows I've never taken uh, taken any writing courses or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last podcast episode uh, that was published before this one goes out was with Katarina. And we were talking about how we took the Taya book that is out now, Amazon.com. And, <laughs> and we sent it to, uh, when we were writing it, we sent it to a developmental editor to pick it apart, mm -hmm. read it, because this was somebody who was not into Taya, who didn't know anything about, didn't even know what a channel was. Mm -hmm. And we said, read this like you're just picking it up and we want to know what doesn't make sense, what we need to, to clarify in here so that anyone can benefit from this writing. They all did a good job. Oh, you did a good did a very, job. We re rewrote the whole book after that and it took years to get all that done. So mm -hmm. the developmental editor, the notes were, the streams writing is brilliant. This person is not a writer and the, the writing is so brilliant. David's writing needs a lot of help. <laughs> That's so cute. <laughs> David with his 10th grade uh, Louisiana education is not such a great writer, but the stream is a great writer. I thought it was so funny. That's and, great. Uh, and Katarina said, well, it's coming from the same person, but he's channeling the stream. And she said, well, I guess there's something to this channeling stuff because the writing does not need a lot of it's work. obviously different. Yeah. Yeah. It's obviously different. And when David is in, in David's voice, it's, it's not the same. Well, I want to say, David, for someone who says he can't write, you really speak well. Did you have to take courses in speaking? I'm self-taught completely. I've taught myself everything. You're very nothing. articulate and your and your pronunciation is beautiful and you don't have an accent. I mean, you sound very professional. Well, um, get me get me down south and my accent comes back real fast. So um That's where the accent comes out sometimes, I think. I, I hear it sometimes. Do you? I haven't heard it really. I don't think I have a Boston accent. I, I try to minimize it because it was told to me that if I wanted a public speaking um, type job that I had to, uh, that the Boston accent was ignorant. And I don't necessarily well, people prejudge the Southern. I don't necessarily accent. believe that's true, but it came to me at such Same. an early age that I've been working at it my whole life. At, at I grew up around some very sharp people who had very thick Southern accents. So mm -hmm. I know that's not always true, but that's the stereotype. It is, it it is not true. It is not true. It's, and it doesn't understand. make someone ignorant because they have an accent. Not at all. Right. But, uh, do you think we covered the Jesus like thing enough, David, or is there anything, any other aspect that you want? To well, I, I think we can bring the stream in and talk about that a little bit. I liked getting okay. your perspective up front. Uh, okay. about it. And then you can, let's take a break. And when we come back okay. from break, you can chat with the stream about Jesus. Oh, I would love that. Thank you. The Taya practice is on sale now at amazon.com. And I can tell you, I hear from people now almost every day who are getting the book. They are plowing through it in about three days. And they are telling me how it's a perspective unlike anything else they've heard before, that it is a blend of many things that they have dabbled in and they love the way that Taya marries all of these practices and belief systems, the things that really work for people in one practice that you can begin employing in your life the day you get the book. So check out the TYA practice on Amazon today. I absolutely concur with that. I think the book is fabulous. I think it's going to change the world. At least it's going to change some people's world. Thank you, Reverend Denise Roberge. Anytime. Anytime. All right. Let's bring the stream in. Let's do it. And uh, what we do here, if you haven't listened to this podcast before, if you're new to our podcast, we take a moment to meditate. We do this together. You're going to hear a little bit of silence, but that's okay because what we're doing is we're summoning source in to come and play with us. Mm -hmm. Here we go.
We are here. Hello. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm honored to be in your presence, and I want to thank you for teaching me all that you've taught me through David and through the books and through the other people in, in the Taya program. Um, it's made a huge difference in the quality of my life. My life has changed dramatically since I have studied your, uh, your teachings through David, and I'm very, very appreciative. Uh, my heart is wide open, and I do talk to you. I know you know that, but I'm telling you. I guess the world that I do talk to source all the time. So I thank you. We, David and I have been to had, having a chat about Jesus, who is an absolutely fascinating character to me and to many. And I was wondering if you would give us your perspective of the first, the human aspect of Jesus and uh, what that involved and later and afterwards maybe the spiritual aspects source aspects etc is that does that sound clear do you understand indeed great the the broader question is was there really a human being named jesus and and, and did this human being do all of the things that 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 are told that they did and we will start right off the bat by sharing that Yes, there was a human being that inspired all of these teachings. Yes, this human being was a teacher. Yes, this human being was a vibrational being, just as you all are. This human being was born of two human parents, as you all are. This human being traveled up and down their virtual vibrational spiral, as you all do. Mm -hmm. This human being moved through a vibrational landscape, but absolutely, spent a great deal of time in, in, in deep thought and contemplation about their place in the world and, and questioning everything that was going on around them at the time that they were in physical. And through all of the questioning, all of the clarity that was allowed to flow created what has morphed into what, what may be referred to Christianity or Christ consciousness. But understand that when a teacher moves through a human experience, they are vibrationally aligned with the time that they are physically manifested. Yes. That, that is a specific vibration. They are of that time. Their clarity is of that time. The needs that they are, are meeting or the ones who are choosing to follow their teachings are, are very much of that time. Mm -hmm. As human beings, you tend to pay attention to and, and, and give more credit to things that, that, that have staying power. But understand that much of this, this staying power, the, the, the things that tend to take on a life beyond the physical life that was experienced, much of that is heavily flavored and influenced by other human beings. It, it, it becomes a human creation. Now understand that all creation is a creation of consciousness first. So this collective mindset through the, the, the centuries of folklore, of, of the stories being retold and the, teacher, the teachings being recast and all of these things, that these teachings morph and, and, and sort of take on a life of their own. And in doing so, very often the core message, and you will notice the core message is still available. All these years later, the core message is still available. And, and those of you that are channeling, when you set up your intention to channel as little of your ego and as much of source as possible as most of you were doing at this time on planet Earth, the core teachings are not at all inconsistent with what you are receiving and what you are sharing. The, the core message has not changed because universal law does not change. That's what Absolutely. makes it universal law. I agree. But the way humanity is receiving it and processing it and what you are choosing to do with it that is very much of the vibration of your time. So that consciousness is very, very real because of the consciousness itself. You, your, your collective opinion of it and your collective focus upon it is what continues to give it life and make it very, very real. So any and every aspect that you choose to believe about that physical being, the teachings and what that is morphed into is very real for you. Mm -hmm. And understand that you're all operating in your own belief systems, as, as we have stated many times. 
And in these belief systems, if you are allowing yourself to attach the thoughts of other human beings that have been peppered in along the way, and you are choosing that as your belief system, then that is your belief system. There is nothing right nor wrong about it. It is simply your chosen belief system. It is the experience that you are choosing to have as, as a human being manifested at this time on what you call planet Earth. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you. Um, I really liked what you had to say about the teacher, Jesus, coming through for the people of that time. And that thus, uh, would you agree that the language that he used and the um, that some of the teachings were colored by the historical epic, you know, the, 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 the geology, the geography. Uh, absolutely. Because the, these things have been translated to, to various languages and in, in terminology that didn't even exist mm -hmm. at that time. And you're, you're very well aware that, that many of the, the things have been flavored, that many of the teachings have been flavored mm -hmm. by the thoughts of others and the des oh. desires of others. But yes. when you have what you might call a, a successful deity, you have a successful brand name of a deity to, to put it into very modern terminology. It's easy to attach things to that deity and say that this is what they said. This is what we, the human being, want you to do because this is what they said. Mm -hmm. And where we guide you always with all things, including what we are offering for you, is to absorb it, let it inspire additional thought, <clears throat> and allow yourselves to go inward and allow your emotions Meaning when you strip away judgment and fear and, 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 and old belief systems and things like this, and when you allow yourself to be a completely open sieve, if you will, to receive information and pay attention to how you are receiving it, how you're feeling when you receive it. Because many of your emotions are these pre-manufactured things that are, that are a learned reaction to things. But when you strip all that away, when, when you allow yourselves to sit in, in, in silence and set an intention to remove judgment, remove fear, remove preconceptions about something, and really tune in and listen in a state of high appreciation with the intentionality of understanding, uh, the intentionality of clarity, pay attention to, to how that vibes with you and understand that your internal system, your internal vibrational system is the very best barometer for you to gauge what is consistent with where you are in your journey. What is serving your next step? What is drawing you forward into a higher vibrational state of being? This is why we guide you back to emotions because your emotions are your indicator of where you are vibrationally. And if you are triggered by something, it is our promise to you that there is nothing of source that will ever, 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 ever trigger you. If you are, are absorbing something of source and you are triggered, the source aspect of it is not creating a trigger. It never will. Some ego-driven, preconceived judgment, opinion, is what's creating that trigger. Is that why some sects of Christianity have people in it that are so hateful and and teach they, they they misuse the words of that the man Jesus taught in ways that are um, homophobic for example um, super dogmatic uh, right and wrong hell brimstone etc 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 are they repeating reflections of themselves are they are they emitting reflections of themselves and calling it Christ? The, the reflection of their belief system that is essentially their ego mm -hmm. the, the, their ego has crafted this this vibration of righteousness that that you are following these rules and you are living your life the way that you are being told that you're supposed to according to the group that you are assigning yourselves to mm -hmm. and that makes you a righteous therefore superior being everyone that is not you is inferior or everyone that is not you is not only inferior, but should be feared. Mm. Oh, yes. yes. Or even extinguished. It's a shame because I, I, it seems to me from my studies that and my just inner resonance with the spirit of Jesus 
the Christ consciousness or whatever you want to call that, uh, the energy of Christ, of Jesus Christ, the man. Um, to me, I yeah, there, there were some funny, there was some funny stuff in the Catholic Church that didn't mesh for me. But the Jesus loved the innocents. Jesus loved the sinners. Jesus loved, there were all kinds of stories about him showing kindness and mercy and healing for people that did not fit into society, for people that were outcast, for people that were ill or uh, mentally ill or whatever. And he performed what appeared to be miracles, which I don't believe were really miracles because I think they were, uh, I think it's, um, he, he, the man was just so connected to source that people could look at, looked at him and saw source and were healed. The process of, of what you might call a miracle is always a self-produced process. You, you you all create miracles for yourselves. You all because are capable we're all connected of to you, right? Because we're all indeed, to the indeed. The, 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 you are all expressions of that which we are, which is the source of all creation. Creation, mm -hmm. a miracle is simply a creation occurring in a, in a way that is unexpected, at a mm -hmm. speed that is unexpected. That's that's what you call a miracle. Mm -hmm. Creation can be instantaneous. But you've created this matrix for yourselves where your creation typically is not instantaneous. And, and there's nothing wrong with this because it gives you a, an experience between the, the, the desire of the thing that you want to take place and the thing actually manifesting and occurring. There's usually a, a lag time in the creation process. We do not operate in linear time. All, all creation is instantaneous in the energetic realm. The physical expression, however, there's the lag time that is created, but that creates the experience for you. The experience of, of coming to terms with and figuring it out and, and essentially moving through vibrational flow, allowing things to, to sort of manifest and demanifest and remanifest yet again to create a more perfect version of. It mm -hmm. ferrets out the flaws. It ferrets out the problems. This is the natural state of the process of creation universally. So the, the concept of a miracle is simply the crossroads of, of allowing mm -hmm. that, that pure state of belief without any doubt or resistance or fear peppered in creates instantaneous manifestations, that which you call miracles. However, understand that you do not have the power to create that in the space of another. The only thing that you have the power to do, perhaps, is inspire enough belief in the other for them to do that for themselves. And then perhaps they're turning and giving you the credit for taking them there. And you're then considered the healer or the miracle maker where the person doing the manifesting is creating the actual thing. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, I believe that there, there are people that facilitate healing that understand they facilitate. Indeed. They're facilitating that, the self healing that's taking place. Yes. Uh, and anyone that calls themselves a healer is, is it's kind of a misnomer. You're a facilitator, in my opinion, a facilitator of healing. You have a gift of maybe making someone feel safe enough or maybe helping someone see things that are beautiful about themselves um, that they couldn't see before, which raises their vibration, thus which raises their ability to create um, either instantaneously or over time. Um, I know that there have been, I have had, I, I'd like to ask you while I have you um, about visitations and visions um, of religious figures such as uh, Jesus was. And the reason I ask you this is because as a child, as a young girl, 13, 14, 15 years old, I had a couple of intense and, and beautiful resonant experiences with the mother of Jesus, Mary, and with Jesus. And I, I felt that I, I, I saw them, felt them, and I felt changed by it. I felt lifted. Um, I felt healed. Now, could you explain how, what that's all about? Because I didn't know much back then. I was young. I was a kid and I didn't know a whole lot. I had a whole bunch of experiences I couldn't explain. I, I'm learning to put words on them now. But could you talk about that? Because mm -hmm. there's been so many, so many apparitions and so many visions and um, there's so many holy spots where people have had uh, these types of experiences. And, and they, they are all authentic. We, we, will, we will begin right there that these things are all authentic. But notice that they are always consistent with the belief system that mm -hmm. the, the person is operating in. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. the, the Muslim will, will encounter their deity in a very different way yeah. 
than a than a than a Jewish person would encounter a deity, than a Christian would encounter a deity, than a Buddhist would encounter what they consider a deity, or a non-deity in that in that case. Or a the, teacher, they they don't really believe in deities. Indeed, in, indeed. Mm-hmm. And the, the, what what is happening is in every single instance, the, the one that is authentically receiving is authentically receiving source, and filtered through their belief system having an authentic experience that is absolutely real for them and and therefore real Mm -hmm. of experiencing in physical form, the physical expression of the energy that is source, whether it is labeled God or or otherwise, it is all the same. It's all rooted in the same thing. The, the, the dogma, the, the, this is the only way and every other way is wrong. That is a human creation. Anything less than, than appreciation of all things is a human creation. Period. Mm-hmm. When you when you one click down from authentic, full blown, unabashed appreciation of all that is, you're starting to move away from source, and it's natural for you to do that. Mm-hmm. It is natural for all humans to create the separation from source. That's that's the function of the ego. That's what delivers the human journey. But understand when you're operating in source and when you are not. That is the the key relevance or the key difference in in the message is shared through David than most other teachers. But humanity needed to to move through an experience to ready itself for that level of awareness. Mm -hmm. That's why those of you that have done a lot of work are receiving this this way now, both internally and through our message and and the connection to us via David. Your words moved me very, very deeply. Thank you. Um, I appreciate how you explained the authenticity of this type of experience being filtered down through your own belief system and you thus have an experience of source that's absolutely real and authentic, yet colored by your own perception of source, deity. You you are receiving the energetic realm in a way that is filtered through so that it it makes sense to you, so that it is of service to you. You can't, the energetic realm is energetic. You can feel it, but you can't see it and you can't process it and comprehend it the way you do physical things when you're in physical. When you're not in physical, you don't need those tools anymore, but you are limiting yourself to a physical human experience so that you can have the unique experience itself Mm -hmm. and expand your consciousness in that process. So anything that is going to be of service to you in your physical state is going to be something that you can relate to. What do you relate to? A humanized version of that, which you call God a humanized version of that, which you call source. However you label those things, that humanized version is always filtered through your mind. But do not think for a moment that we are discounting that or discrediting that in any way. Have those experiences. They are very real for you. Do not seek to try to not be human while you're human. Allow your humanity. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you. Allow your humanity. I Oh, that's that's deep. That's true wisdom right there. Thank you. Um, I'm a channel and there have been times when I feel very strongly that some of my teachers who are now deceased, I've had a lot of teachers in my life. I'm 67. I've been studying since I was about 16. So, you know, I've had a lot of teachers and some of them, uh, were lived at different times. Like one was teaching in 1875 and another one was teaching in 1967 and you know but i feel like they're all so resonant that they're a group now like they're together in some form or fashion because i feel sometimes i feel a strand when i'm channeling i feel a strand of this one yet connected to this one yet do do you understand you have created that unique strand of consciousness for yourself and your amalgam of experiences absolutely Okay, because I do feel like Mary Baker Eddy and and Wayne Dyer and um, Jerry Hicks and you, Abraham. You all possess the ability to... to, are to all, they're all mixed up in, the, in one big, beautiful the, ray. A consortium, if you if you will, of, of energetic strands of energy. You, you all have the ability. You all do this, whether you realize you do it or not. You I all have do a this. Quest, I have a question for you. This is, this is of interest to many people. Over the years, I've changed my my ideas about angels. Um, I, I have I have I'm I'm always evolving around the, the term angel and what it means and what it means in my life and and that I know angel is a message or a messenger. Most traditions will say that they're a message or a messenger. Are 
is is there a strand of source consciousness that is so pure um, that it comes through in in light like angels supposedly do they come through in light rays of light or um energy light energy light bridges the gap between physical and, and energetic mm -hmm. or you as a, as a human being and, mm -hmm. and and so it is it is understandable that you would experience the energy that is source as as light mm -hmm. because that 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 is a bridging of, of those those two elements if you will mm -hmm. the angelic being it, it is the humanization of, of the energetic realm right but it's it's such pure source energy that you feel that loving caring enveloping energy mm -hmm. and and that is how you all identify and you all experience this it, every physical being experiences that because it's flowing all the time it never forsakes never anything. stops any form of physical being never stops never leaves <laughs> always there the physical consciousness, the physical aspect consciousness, that which you may call ego for a human being, that drowns it out. That that serves on some level to, to, to round it out. And certainly you can turn the volume up on that. You can turn it down a bit. You can never turn it off, but it's drowning it out. And when you turn the volume down on the ego and you're allowing more of that, and there's times that you're in great need, that it's a sudden thing that you experience, mm -hmm. a, a, a sort of crisis uh, intervention, if you will, that, that pulls you from a crisis and moves you through it and, and shifts time for you a little bit. Right. Where suddenly you are mentally or even physically or both in a, a completely different space than you were just a moment ago. And it's usually at some sort of crisis crossroads mm -hmm. that can happen for you. There can be times of deep despair where there is nothing left for you to despair about. You're all the way at the bottom of your spiral. You're ready to exit your physical being. In fact, you're so low on your spiral, you're not even thinking of exiting your physical being. You're thinking of ceasing to be altogether, even energetically down there. Mm -hmm. When you reach that space, you sort of hit a reset. And that's when source comes flowing right back in. Because oh. at that in that space of deep despair, there is no place left to go but up. And any amount of correction up, if your desire is to go up your spiral, you are going to receive so much source in your perspective in that moment that suddenly you're going to be in that angelic space once again you're is going to be transformed or even transported in that moment one of the things that i've heard from abraham through esther many times is that the deeper into pain or misery or whatever that you go the more rockets of desire you shoot out and when you come to the other side of this experience the healing and the and the energy of the experience is so high and so it's wonderful. more significant because you you've right. really gone into so you agree with that the, absolutely you've gone into the where where do you think that that's coming from that that's that you're going into that transgressor energy so deep that you you are at the bottom of your spiral for a moment and there's no place left to go and there's a desire to either disappear or have a have an awakening and the awakening that's when you allow the awakening in and that's the end of the desire and the beginning of the new experience which which, which is the experience of light and love and and the source of all creation's presence and it is in such contrast to that deep despair that it's a very powerful experience oh that's marvelous that's just absolutely wonderful i would like to um wrap wrap up a little bit. It's almost time for David and Denise to finish. Um, so I would like very much to say how much I appreciate you speaking through David. I always have. I have for a number of years now. And I know that many people feel the same way. Your book has blessed many. Um, I say your book, yours and David's and Katerina's book have blessed and will bless, continue to bless many. And bless is, uh, we, we are forever grateful, those of us who have gotten to know um, um, the Taya program and you and all the materials, forever grateful. And I appreciate this talk today so much. I can't wait to talk to you again another time. I hope I get invited back. With much love. Much and, love, yeah. much love. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I feel like a million <laughs> bucks right now. That's all I can Isn't say. Isn't that the greatest feeling that... Oh. I, I, I can't even explain what that is. It's just well, I go, I'll, I channel, so I know exactly what you're talking about. That was a beautiful. It's a beautiful. The height was, of exhilaration. You were you brought in 
magnificently high energy and light. You were you were radiating. It was it was blowing out your pores. I mean, it was. Just, and there was there was something new in there too. Um, there were, I think there was. I think there, there were was a things. new thing in there about that that bottom of the spiral. I, I mm. became very aware that oh. David's in the background. Oh shit! This is new. This is new yeah. territory that I we're covering. Heard that. I never heard that, heard that 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 creates this 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 transformative experience. And, and I don't think anybody should you know, deliberately try to take themselves. You don't have to do that. Oh, no. But no. but in times in life when you are there, that's when that angelic energy becomes realized because there. And I love that. There's just nothing left. When there's nothing left, you strip it all away. You're ready to just cease. That's when you're like, oh, this is what source is. This is what the universe is. This is what eternity looks like. Mm -hmm. And there's no ceasing. There's no need for that. And that 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 sudden shift in focus is a very powerful can experience. I, can I tell you something, David, from my personal experience that is absolutely illustrative of this point? I spent many years of my social work life um, which was before the spiritual stuff that I'm doing now. I spent 30 years doing some version of both. But anyway, I worked with people that had alcohol and drug issues, very, very severe. And they were all traumatized by something. They all had serious transgressor energy um, that was all over them. And that was, it was horrible. The, the, the awful stories you hear about abuse, that's, these, these are the people that experienced mm -hmm. that stuff. <clears throat> there have been many addicts and alcoholics who have gotten to that place of complete despair, complete hopelessness, feeling like they just want to melt away and not be around anymore, but yet they don't quite have the energy to kill themselves. Because that, that, You know, you can't kill yourself when you're at the bottom because you don't have the energy. So you have to go up a little bit and at least get angry or get mm. frustrated. You know, that's up the spiral from despair. You have to go up just a little bit to get the energy to kill yourself. So when you're down there, you're in a complete acceptance mode. I've seen this over and over and over again. People said, I was done. I was done. I was just laying there saying, it's time. Take me, God. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And when suddenly the phone rings or suddenly someone shows up at the door or suddenly uh, they're, they're watching a commercial on TV for a, a, a rehab two towns away that they can call or some something that looks and it's like, like a miracle. miracle. It's, it, is, it is like a miracle. Right. I've heard many, many, many stories and, and the sor sources, um, the stream's explanation fits it to a T, fits these experiences to a T. These people that are completely despondent and feel that there's nowhere else to go, that they're just done. And then suddenly, boom, they can't do it themselves. They can't kill themselves yet. They're not there yet, but they don't want to be here anymore. And then something happens. The halls of Alcoholics Anonymous and therapy couches, therapist couches are full of miracles. What they call miracles. Now, I think it's supremely natural that people heal. Right. I think, I think that's a, it's not uh, supernatural. Although well, the stream has said that, that miracles are everywhere all the time. Supernatural, I guess. But yeah, and ready, ready to materialize. It's right. our so as the person's willing to receive, and and that's the right. that's what I teach all the time. I teach all you have to do is show up and be real, be who you really are, no matter what, good, bad, or ugly, and be ready to receive. Just be open. Just be open and say, okay, source, whatever you have going going on there, uh, I need it now. I'm ready. And, and really, truly be ready to let go and allow and receive. Being in receptive mode, as, as Abraham called it, our receptivity is, is the, 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 the whole secret to um, having a better life. And that requires a certain amount of work and a certain amount of awareness and a certain amount of acceptance. Well, what it requires is trust. And that's what Taya came from, Complete, trust and abundance. Completely. That, it yes. all, that's, what, that's where Taya came from because it, 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 I finally oh, I realized it really is. It's, it's always there, the allowing, and I get all that, but we got to trust it. Even when it's not revealing itself to us. And that's the hard thing. That's the harder part. Trusting it when it's not showing up immediately the way that you know some people tell us it's supposed to well i remember i'm i'm old enough and tired to remember when it was abundance breakthroughs and it wasn't even called taya yet and, uh, yeah. and, and when you came through with the, the when, when source came, uh this is 
the stream came through with Taya. I'm like, trust your abundance. Trust that it's already there. You know, it's already there. Yeah, just, that's the key to everything is trust. It's ready for you. When you're ready, you're going to receive. It's all there already. It's already everything you have. Uh, Mary Baker Reddy um, was the founder of Christian Science, and she always said, supply always precedes demand. And I love that quote. I love it. Supply always precedes demand. No matter what you need, there's more of it than you could imagine. Well, we and that's what is, so, uh, the stream says that all the time, that there's far more positive than negative. We tend to focus on negative sometimes, but there's, always, there's evidence all around us of that. I agree. There's far more positive than negative in the universe and certainly in our world. We focus on the negative or what we don't have because just the matrix has taught us to do that. Mm -hmm. But that well-being is always flowing. We just hold ourselves away from it for a bit until we don't anymore. Right. Until we learn how not to. And Taya is fabulous at that. At that. I, I hadn't detuned some things by the time I got into Taya. And um, I didn't know that they still needed detuning because for me, I'd been in therapy. I'd done read these books. I've been to churches. I've been, I, I've been exploring for a long, long time and trying all these different things. And Ty just put some certain pieces together for me, but it fit in with all the stuff that from the Wayne Dyers and the Mary Baker Eddies and the, you know, they were teaching this stuff, but I wasn't receiving it. They were all, I was already learning all this stuff, but Ty was like, boom, that's what they meant. You know, that's what they all meant. That's all the time, you know? Yeah. So, you were just in a state of readiness for it. When I was absolutely through. ready. And I was so tired of the anxiety and the, uh, and the fear and, uh, the leftover residual energy from transgressors. And I was, I was done. I was just done. I didn't get hopeless. I wasn't in that misery, hopeless place, but I wasn't, I wasn't as up the spiral as I am now. I'll tell you yeah, that. You are. And you, you, you've continued to do the work and it shows. So it's, it's always it's a joy to have you on. And to chat. Well, we chatted for almost <laughs> half an hour half before. Half an hour started. before. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I want to remind you when, I, after my I was probably almost done with boot camp. I said, you know, David, I don't think you and I are done. And you said, well, what do you mean? I said, I think there's something else for us to do. I, I don't know what Yeah, it you is did yet. say that. Uh, and you said- and there still is, yeah. And you know what you said? You said that, do you remember what you said back to me? You said, I don't feel that, Denise. And I said, okay, it's all right. Whatever happens is fine. I was completely okay with you not feeling it. But the thing is, I think I'm, I'm a really good cheerleader for you. And I, I want to continue to be a cheerleader for you and, and your program. And I appreciate it very much. I absolutely do. And I, I love having From you. My in heart, I love this program and I love, and I adore you. I've always loved you. So, and I love having you uh, on the podcast as well. So come back okay. often and tell I, everybody where they can find you. Oh, how nice. I get a plug. Thank you. You get a plug. Um, my um, website's called uh, one mind spiritual services. It's one mind is one word. So www.onemindspiritualservices.com and uh, the pro, my, that's the name of my practice, One Mind Spiritual Services. And I picked One Mind because there's only one mind. And um, that's that. That's the truth. There's only one. It's all, all belongs to the same source. Everything comes from source. There's nothing else. And it's all things. You're right. That's, that's what it all is. So uh, I would love to hear from anyone. There is a place on my website where you can send me an email. And if you have any questions or if you'd like to meet with me or find out more, you can get a free consultation or whatever. Thank you, David. One mind spiritual services.com. There you go. And we'll put a link in the notes as well. In case you didn't get that, we'll put the link in. I appreciate Thank you for that. listening, everybody. And thank you again, Denise. Thank you. Have a good night, David. Thank you for listening to the Stream of David podcast. To learn more about the stream or the Taya practice, visit thestreamofdavid.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcast provider. And if you would, take a moment to leave us a review. And also, follow us on TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram, and join our free Facebook group, the Taya practice, the T-Y-A practice. Thanks for listening.